Beto O'Rourke, the latest Democrat to join the presidential race, begins day two of his three-day tour through Iowa this morning. We met the former Texas congressman and Senate candidate at a coffee shop as he finished his third stop in Iowa yesterday. He spoke with us across the street at an art gallery. The name of this center, by the way, is the Art Center of Burlington. Very, very nice people there. This is his first TV interview since announcing his campaign. We talked about why he decided to run, his plans to tackle health care, and why he thinks his limited government experience will not hurt his chances. So here we are, day one, 600 days to go, till election day. Right. We actually counted. Why you, why now? This country has never faced a greater set of challenges. For us to meet these challenges, including the greatest of them all, the existential crisis of climate change, we are all going to have to pull together. We're going to have to fix this democracy, mm -hmm. make it work for and represent everyone. The way in which I have served in El Paso on the City Council or in the United States Congress, the way in which I campaigned all across Texas is all about bringing people together. But as you know, the criticism has already started. Three-term congressman, uh, no real legislation in his own name, lack of experience. I think even the Texas Tribune said, you know, paper-thin record. Why shouldn't voters be concerned about voting for you with your lack of experience? Well, I'm grateful that ultimately it's up to voters and that they'll have a chance to meet with me, question me, listen to me, and I'll have a chance to, to listen to them. Lifelong El Pasoan uh, with Amy raising these three amazing kids, small business owner, serving in local government, being in the minority party for every one of the six years I was in Congress, and yet delivering for the people I served, delivering for veterans, delivering for our border community. Um, these were all things that we did by working with and listening to other people. And I'm convinced that it holds the key to our ability to meet even greater challenges before us. The only way we do this is by renewing and fixing our democracy and bringing everyone in. So for many people, Beto, who are really just looking at you for the first time, can I just want to hit the issues. Health care, we all agree, everybody wants affordable health care for all Americans. You intend to do that how? So the, the goal should be universal, guaranteed, high quality health care. Um, I think we complement, supplement those who have private employer insurance with the ability to be covered under Medicare. That allows us uh, sooner than almost any other plan to ensure every single American has the ability to see a doctor, afford their prescriptions, or take their child to a therapist. Are you from the Medicare for All? I think Medicare for All is one of the possible paths. Uh, I think the fastest way to get there is to ensure that people who have insurance that they like through their employer are able to keep it, and that we complement that with those who can purchase Medicare, uh, be covered by Medicaid. Taxes? You planning to raise taxes on the wealthy? Yes. Uh, I how, think. How much? I, I think corporations should be asked to pay um, a greater share into the success of, of this country. I think the wealthiest at a time of historic income inequality should be asked to, to pay uh, a greater share. I don't know what the levels should be at, but I know that the tax cuts from nearly two years ago of $2 trillion at a time that we had $21 trillion in debt at a moment of extraordinary need across this country uh, was one of the most irresponsible things that the country has ever done. And you said, if you are elected, your cabinet will look like America. Absolutely. What does that mean and why is that important to you? In a country where the wealth is disproportionately concentrated in white families, um, in a country where the prison population, the largest on the face of the planet, is disproportionately black and brown, in a country that has never never fully accounted for the cost of slavery, of segregation, of suppression, of voters, of participation in our economy. We have a lot of work to do. And where we can ensure that those who have the opportunity to hold positions of power and public trust look like and reflect the country, we should make every effort to do so. You had said earlier that you thought uh, President Trump should be impeached. Do you still feel that way? It's beyond the shadow of a doubt to me that if there was not collusion, there was at least the effort to collude with a foreign power. Beyond the shadow of a doubt that if there was not obstruction of justice, there certainly was the effort to obstruct justice, whether that's firing James Comey, the principal investigator into what happened in the 2016 election, or in the light of day, tweeting to your attorney general 
as President Trump did to end the Russia investigation. Because you know Speaker Pelosi's gone on record. She does not think that's the way to go at this particular time. How Congress chooses to address those set of facts and the findings, which I believe we are soon to see from the Mueller report, is up to them. Um, I think the American people are going to have a chance to decide this at the ballot box in November 2020. And perhaps that's the best way for us to resolve these outstanding questions. Listen, he's candidate number 13 that enters the race. In this case, he, he does not think 13 is an unlucky number. And he's <laughs> the only candidate who lives in a border city. And he said, listen, our nation is successful not in spite of immigrants, but because of immigrants. And that's one of the reasons why he says El Paso is a safe city. And his thoughts on a border wall, it went from no border wall whatsoever to, you know, there should be something. We have to figure out exactly what that is. But he's not in favor of a big, massive border wall. Well, one of the criticisms he's received is that he hasn't been giving many specifics. So it was important that you ask him about his thoughts specifically on health care and Medicare for all. He really addressed that, I think, in many ways we haven't heard from him yet. No, he was very specific. You know, listen, he was very popular in Iowa. People really wanted to see him. They shouted out questions. He was very specific in all of his answers. I think he had a good day in Iowa yesterday. Mm. And that will continue for the next two days, he hopes.